Zombification revives the recently dead into mindless, soulless zombies as part of the voodoo religion. The Bokors, Haitian voodoo sorcerers, have the power to create and control zombies. The exact methods and concoctions used vary among Bokors, but the process believed by the Haitian people describe the following general pattern. Some zombification processes use blood and hair from their victims in addition to using voodoo dolls, while others involve a carefully prepared mixture called Cote de Poudre, Poupa Powder, one of them, Powder Strike, made of mystical herbs, human remains, and animal parts. Administrating this mixture can also vary from ingestion, injection, or even a blow dart. Once the mixture has been made by the Bokor and administrated to the victim, it starts to take effect on the body. The victim now becomes immobile, has an incredibly faint heartbeat, and his or her breathing is drastically reduced within a few minutes so that the victim appears dead. While in this death resembling state, the victim is still fully aware of the surroundings but cannot express themselves. Once taken to the hospital and declared dead by the doctor, the seemingly lifeless body is buried in a grave soon after death, since the heat and lack of refrigeration generally in Haiti makes the bodies decay rapidly. Mm. So in Haiti, basically, they just hurry up and bury you because of, uh, you know, because they don't have the means, I guess, to keep you, to keep your body, so... They try to hurry up and bury you before you decay. So that means if they ain't paying close enough attention, they won't realize that this person is actually still alive. After the body is buried, the Bacor enters the grave and dig up the body. This happened within eight hours of the burial because otherwise the victim would die from uh, not having no oxygen. Next, the Bakor performs an ancient voodoo rite where he or she captures the victims, called the T-Born Ange, which is part of the soul directly connected to the individual. He or she can do this by capturing it within seven days immediately following the death of the corpse cadaver, while it is still hovering over the corpse, or by spreading poisons in the form of a cross on the threshold of the victim's doorway. Either way, this affects a split in the spiritual parts of the victim and produces two complementary types of zombies. The spirit zombie, the zombie of the T-bone age alone, and the zombie cadaver, the zombie of the flesh, which is composed of the name and a gross bone age, and the z etora, the ethnobiology of the Haitian zombie. That's where this stuff coming from, I guess. Then he traps the spirit zombie part of the soul, or zombie a straw, in a small clay jar, or some other commonplace container, and replaces it with the lao in the back or controls. This container is hidden in a secret place known only to the Bakor, and is finally wrapped in a piece of the victim's clothing or some other personal possession. After a day or two, the Bakor administers a hallucinogenic mixture called the zombie's cucumber that revives the victim and is used to keep the zombie in a state of submissive confusion. The Bakor and the magic powder. Hmm. In this state, the zombie cannot speak. He has no memory and no longer resembles his past human personality. As a result, the zombie is easy to control and the Bokor can use the zombie as a slave for farm labor and construction work. The zombies are completely under the rule of the Bokor that made them and consequently work as slaves until the Bokor dies. Once they are released from the slave labor, the zombie can finally return to their home village or a place of burial and die. You know what? You know, I ain't going to even get into if this is true or not. I'm going to tell you one thing. If I had the power to control somebody like that, I, I still would be scared of death for them. Could you imagine being in your house and just 
walking around lifeless in your house. You got four, five people just standing there staring at the wall all night. <laughs> no, I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> no, that's creepy, man. That's creepy. Boy, that's some creepy junk. I, man, I need to do a movie on that. Because even if you make them into a zombie, you still got to deal with them just hovering around you. <laughs> man, heck no. I'm like, boy, you better take your crazy butt on somewhere. Get away from me. Go to sleep. I mean, I'd be the lock them mugs up somewhere during the night or something, man. Shit. A major concern in Haitian folklore concerning zombies is the act of feeding salt to a zombie. While zombies are usually not particularly dangerous, giving them salt will return their senses and restore their personality. This will lead the zombies to attack the Bacor who created them or to return to their place of burial for their final death. See that one I'm talking about right there. All they gotta do is get some salt to snap back into it. Well, they sure gonna get some salt up in my house somewhere. So, uh, season salt, Cajun salt, uh, pink Himalayan salt, sea salt, iodized salt, uh, barbecue uh, spice salt, uh, pork salt, uh, Cajun rub salt, pork butt salt. <laughs> Shit. I got all kind of different junk up in my fruit for our, uh, cabinet, so sooner or later, that zombie gonna be the get to that dang salt rack. While zombification seems to at first be a strictly physical experience, there's additionally a psychological aspect to the ritual, and is a spiritual process, a psychological or cultural predisposition is imperative in order for the victims to become a zombie. After being buried alive, the victim's reawakening as a zombie follows a psychotic state. The victim is able to reconstruct their identity as a zombie due to a condition of the psychosis induced by the drugs. The psychological trauma of being buried alive and a strong belief of zombies in their culture. This all contributes to the psychological aspect that controls the victim's perception and actions. Living in Haiti and the social reinforcement of their beliefs in zombies further contribute to their zombie identity and experience. Scottish psychiatrist R.D. Lang and emphasized the connection between social and cultural expectations and compulsion. In the context of schizophrenia and other mental illnesses, Haitian Voodoo, or Voodoo Zombie, he observed that schizoph schiz schizogenesis may contribute to the psychological aspects of zombification. So I guess really all they say, it's amazing how people say so much just to say, take all that just say, all they basically saying is, it's what I always tell people, whatever you believe in is true. If you believe in Jesus, Jesus is real. If you don't believe in Jesus, Jesus ain't real. It's all a per whatever a person believes in. If you believe in ghosts, ghosts is real. <laughs> if you don't believe in ghosts, you'll never see one. You know, you believe in UFOs, you're probably gonna see one. If you don't believe, you probably never will. <laughs> so a lot of times it all comes down to what we believe in. And in their culture, they believe in zombies. They believe in this voodoo magic. So when you believe in something, your brain going to reason with itself to tell you that's what it is. Just like if my rent due and I ain't got the money. But the day the rent due, the last day, somebody offer me a job that pay exactly how much I need. And they said they're going to pay me the same day when I get done. So in my mind, I'm going to be like, man, thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, thank you, man. I was praying all night long. Lord knows it. Blah, blah, blah. That's how, because that's what I believe in. But the person that believes in, uh, maybe they say they did some kind of, uh, some kind of spell, some kind of ritual. They're going to believe that that ritual they did is what got them that, that blessing. 
people that believe that their ancestors are guiding their steps. They're going to say thank the ancestors. Whatever a person or they, some people going to say thank the universe. People got all these different beliefs. So, you know, whatever you believe, you're going to reason with yourself to tell you that that's what it was that did what it is that you needed it to do when it did it.